Hello and thank you for watching. I'm going to recap what genetic inheritance is, how it works and most importantly why it matters in mice breeding. The footage you'll see is of my group of female mice exploring, enjoying some treats and interacting, interspersed with some text when I think things are getting a bit more complicated. Feel free to pause me and read at your own pace if I'm going a little bit fast for you. With all that said, let's start. So all living things are made of cells and these cells can work together to form an organ like your liver and these organs come together to form a system. So your digestive system with your liver and stomach and then all of your systems come together to form a living being. So your respiratory system, digestive system and reproductive system for example. Now the way a cell knows how to function, what organ it should form with other cells, what functions it should carry out, are all from instructions carried inside the cell by DNA. And DNA is stored as two interwoven long strands of amino acids and these strands are tight woundly together to form chromosomes. These chromosomes are then stored inside the cell's nucleus. Chromosomes come in pairs, one is inherited from your mother, one is inherited from your father. And in mice, there are a total of 40 chromosomes, 20 from mum, 20 from the father. Now, the sex cells are different to all other cells in the body, in both mice and humans. Um, these are the only cells that are called haploid. So this means they only have half the number of uh, normal chromosomes. And so when a sperm cell meets an oocyte, the, the female's egg, these combine to give the correct number of chromosomes in that new offspring. DNA itself is made up of different coding sections and so one unit of this inherited information is called a gene and genes are always found at the same place um, on the chromosome and that's known as the genes locus. If there are different versions of a gene, for example a gene for pink eyes or a gene for black eyes, then they're called alleles and it's the combination of the two alleles that are going to uh, determine the expression or repression of a trait. What I mean by a trait is just a, a specific characteristic such as hair or eye colour. So when a trait is visible and inheritable, we can discuss it in terms of the animal's phenotype. But if a trait is not visible, but we know the animal has a copy of a specific allele, then they're called carriers. And although they may look the same as another animal, so the, the phenotype is the same, we can say that they have a different genotype. When we consider an animal's genotype, we take note of both alleles that are coding for a specific gene. So if we stick with the trait eye colour, uh, the gene that codes for this trait has two alleles, the pink allele or the black allele. And for us to see a change in an animal's phenotype depends on the combination of those alleles. So if the alleles code for the same thing, so if both alleles are for black eye, then the trait, the visible thing that we would see, would be a mice with black eyes. And if the uh, both alleles are coding for pink eyes, then you'd see pink eyes. However, if the alleles are not coding for the same thing, then it depends on how each allele behaves. And what I mean by that is alleles can be thought of as um, dominant or recessive. An allele is considered to be dominant, then only one copy of that allele is needed for the trait to be seen. However, if an allele is recessive, then both copies need to be the same to see that change, that change in the phenotype. When we think about an animal's genotype, we don't normally write out the entire description. Instead, a single gene, uh, so eye colour, is expressed as a letter. If that letter is capitalised, then it means the allele is dominant. If the letter is lowercase, then it means the allele is recessive. In the case of eye colour in mice, the letter that is used is P. And a uh, capital P refers to the black eyed trait and a lowercase p for the allele for pink eyes. And so to have the phenotype of visibly pink eyes, the genotype would be written as two lowercase p's. If a mouse has two alleles that code for the same trait, they are referred to as homozygous. However, if they carry two different alleles, that's known as heterozygous. 
it is possible to breed mice and have really wonderful, beautiful offspring and even offspring of the colour that you'd like without having any understanding of genetics. However, a system like that basically relies on luck and trial and error. There are some things that are not possible to breed into a colony of mice, such as um, making your mice have green fur. And something like that limitation is going to be discovered um, more efficiently when you understand the genes at play. There are no genes um, naturally occurring in mice that will give them that colour fur. The way to try and understand how alleles interact is to use something called a Punnett square. And this allows us to think about the two alleles that the mother carries and the two alleles that the father carries and the likely interactions these will have and therefore the likely phenotypes or traits that we would see. Now let's take a father with pink eyes. As we know um, that he has two lowercase p's to have that phenotype, we can write two little p's to represent the alleles that he has available to pass on to the offspring. If we know from previous breeding and lineage that the mother is homozygous but for black eyes, she would have two capital P alleles that we're going to write vertically here. So in this case, the offspring will always inherit one allele for black eye and one allele for pink eye. As we know that black eye is dominant, every pup in this pair would be black eyed. However, they are heterozygous. And that means that they are going to be carriers of that pink eye gene. If we were then to breed the pups together, or two unrelated carriers for that matter, we could have a variety of gene combinations that could be possible. We could have pups that are homozygous for black eyed, pups that are heterozygous like the um, parent pair, or pups that are homozygous for pink eyes. And it's important to note that it doesn't mean if this pair had four pups that one of them would have pink eyes. It's more like rolling a four side dice. The first pup that's born has a one in four chance or 25% chance of landing on that, that pink eyed combination. 25% chance on landing on the homozygous black eye and a 50% chance of landing on the heterozygous black eye. So if we're thinking about that in terms of phenotypes, that means that you're only getting a one in four chance of having that first pup that was born to have pink eyes. You'd then need to roll the dice again for the next pup. So in mice, that means that each pup in this particular theoretical litter has a 25% chance of having pink eyes and a 75% chance of having black eyes. And so it, it would be quite possible, for example, if you had a, a litter of um, four or six, that you could hit some really interesting odds and all six pups could have pink eyes. But it would also be possible that all the pups could have black eyes or a combination of the two options um, with, with some having pink and some having black eyes. So why does all of this matter? Well, fundamentally, when we know about the genes that mice carry and how they interact, we then stand a better chance of being able to breed for the traits that we are looking for. Um, for colour and for length and making sure that it's well distributed, um, as well as things like tameness and size and shape. And this is why it's so important to try and understand the basics um, of breeding and of selective breeding for that matter you are making a decision about who should pair and who should go on to have offspring and that the choices you make will influence what offspring are likely to occur now this video is only meant as a uh, overview and a, a quick reminder of uh, genetics and some of the factors at play my hope is that i will do a follow-up video um, explaining more in depth about the individual genes um, that go into specifically coat variation in mice however i wanted to make sure that that would be accessible um, to everybody. And with that said, um, I do hope you've enjoyed this video and I do hope that it's been useful. Thank you very much for watching.